I'm important. I completely concur with that. Welcome back to What in the World TV, the one-stop shop for directors, producers, casting directors, and agents to find talent for their upcoming projects. We're here today with Sean Hennigan. Well, thank you for explaining the Project 10 thing. I was, I was afraid that maybe Project 9 just didn't work out, and they're like, well, we're going to have to start all over again. It's taken us this long to get here. What was the question? We're talking about spiritual entertainment. Yes. Oh, there's so much violence. I, I'm not into violence. And there's so much um, sexual connotation. I am into sex. Wait, can we? <laughs> okay, so no on violence, yes on sex. <laughs> yes. No, it's... Uh, <laughs> well, it depends on how it is. Sex can be spiritual and entertaining, so it really isn't alleviated by either the two things we're talking about. It was for me the other night. But, and again... <laughs> <laughs> what the bleep? I'm, the bleep? We're going to have to go back and bleep out the bleep. Excellent. So it's kind of like the hundredth monkey principle brought into film and television. The hundredth monkey. Sounds like a drink. I don't know. What is that? We'll be back with the hundredth monkey explanation later. You start small, and then it grows, and then it gets bigger, and, um... <laughs> I can't do this, I was going to say, and then we're talking about sex now. Okay, so, uh... So all roads of spiritual entertainment lead to sex, not violence, kids. You know, Sean, it's moments like that that make the entertainment industry what it is today. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> 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 well, Sean, you certainly do have a sense of humor. We've got to give you that. My sense of humor is certainly one of my great tools in my toolbox, but I also have this thirst for knowledge and to better understand what life is and how to better live it. Uh, I also am a life coach. I help people to realize their dreams, have a better sense of their own empowerment, and help them to move forward with the things that they desire the most. Let's take a look at some of those clips, too, shall we? If you have animals, that's unselfish love. That's unconditional love. They don't care. They love you, period. Now the thing is about this unconditional love thing for me is, is that if I do something, if I make a choice that I regret, and I start to freak out about it and the fear starts to come in, why did I do that? I make the choice, I'm gonna be sorry. I go, I'm just as loved right now as I was before I made that choice. By the same token, if the building is on fire, I run in, and I grab Grandma, throw over my shoulder, grab her cat, she's got a goldfish, grab the goldfish, put it in my mouth. <laughs> Get them all out, into a puddle, fish is good. Cats down, don't eat the fish, I got Grandma. Thank you, Sonny. Wow, look at me, I'm a hero, I'm special, I'm loved. The unconditional love is growing, I feel it in my bones. You love me just the same as you did before I did that? So if you're seeking the reward, if you're seeking how to be better so you can be loved more, huh, you cannot be loved more. It's not possible. It is not possible to be loved more. That which you're a part of, an ongoing, ever-evolving, ever integrated experience of, loves you unconditionally. That's it. Is there anything else that they should know? I'm currently writing a book based on the video that I did called House That Love Built. It was a relationship primer to help people build strong and healthy relationships. It's basically about romantic relationships, but it, a lot of the principles also apply for business relationships and even within our families. So remember, next time you're looking for a relationship, you gotta make sure it's a move-in condition relationship. Check your foundation, make sure that you have the four components of it, friendship, trust and integrity, communication, and respect. Make sure to check the roof and make sure that everything won't permeate the relationship. Soak it and make it really uncomfortable and unpleasant. Make sure that the windows, how you perceive things, how you see things, remain in alignment with one another. Make sure your door is not too well secured so that no one can come in and out, but also by the same token, you don't want to leave it wide open so anybody can just wander in anytime they feel like it. And also, make sure that the plumbing is good, that the energy comes in and goes out, that the flow of emotions is healthy and moves in the way that you desire it to. And also make sure the, the electrical is where you want it to be, the chemistry, the energy. Make sure that the vibration of the person you're with matches your energy so that you don't overwhelm or underwhelm that the person you're with. If you follow these simple techniques, I believe you can have a move-in condition relationship that is a home for many years to come. Hmm. Very interesting, very impressive. Wow, 
Operators are standing by. Call 1-800-619-9992. Call today. What in the World operators are standing by. Or you can click the link below to contact Sean directly.